to thank the people who helped to take the ideas for the center as well and make them a reality. Emeritus Professor Thomas Heffernan and Alan Ruttenberg, two members of the initial committee to create a UT Humanities and Research Institute in 2011. Professor Heffernan serves as the center's first director. Teresa Lee, who as a former dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, strongly supported the center's work and fundraising efforts over the years. Chancellor Dondi Plowman, who gave us this fabulous new space <laughs> to grow arts and humanities research and has consistently stood up the university's commitments to the arts and the humanities. And thank you all and welcome. So I'm really excited to have you here today as the second director of the UT Humanities Center, now the Dendo Center. I've had the privilege of growing the center into a nationally recognized institute of humanities study. Our faculty are tops in the nation for winning in national endowment, national endowment for the humanities grants. We're tied with Princeton, that's the fact that you have to remember. <laughs> and consistently win prestigious national and international humanities grants, taking UT research across the globe. The Denville Center itself has won national humanities endowment grants within years we went to with them and is now in conversation with humanities institutes, public nonprofit organizations, and art centers all throughout the region, from Big Ears Festival to B for Delaney uh, initiatives to our NEH State Council, Humanities Tennessee. We support UT Research Gateway initiatives to develop new interdisciplinary programs in environmental humanities, energy humanities, digital humanities, health humanities, connecting us in new and important ways to the STEM fields. This fall, we partnered with the UT System's One Health Initiative to run One Health and Humanities Days. It was a program in planetary and human health featuring 10 events in three days. We hosted the Vice President of Google and the Director of the Folger Shakespeare Library. The, uh, we have hosted the Poet Laureate of the United States, a Pulitzer Prize evolutionary biologist, the founder of the International Field of Environmental Justice Studies, and some of the most important scholars and famous researchers in digital humanities and AI research writing in writing today. <laughs> now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a graduate research associate that we have working through us for the whole year at the University of Tennessee's Humanities Center, now the Dembo Center, Michael Sutherland, to share some of his remarks. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Sutherland, and I am the Humanities Center Graduate Research Assistant, and I am a PhD candidate for English. My introduction to the center uh, was through my friend, Lucas, uh, who was a previous graduate fellow at the uh, Humanities Center. After praising many facets of the center, he concluded with the following quote, quote, again, the Humanities Center Fellowship was wonderful, truly one of the best parts of being at UTK, end quote. I couldn't agree more. It's hard to communicate just how much of a blessing this experience has been uh, for me. I've learned so much just by attending the many highly engaging events and working with the various scholars. My own dissertation research is on propaganda and didacticism in the 20th century. And by attending the center's distinguished lectures and Chandler seminars, I have learned so much about how my research overlaps with other scholars' works. Having these conversations helped me imagine the possibility of my research in ways I couldn't have learned just by being in classes or on my own. For sure, this place is the hub for the humanities community. As a GRA at the center, I've also worked on a plethora of projects including event organization, graduate programming, social media campaigns, digital humanities projects, and public engagement, engagement initiatives. These responsibilities have resulted in many professional skills as well. I've learned digital communications, team collaboration, problem solving, market analysis, leadership, and grant writing. I know that the Humanities Center has equipped me for careers in community engagement, nonprofit, event logistics, and so much more. The greatest benefit I've experienced here is getting to work with Amy Elias and Katie Hodges Cluck and all the other staff and fellows at the center as well. I've had the pleasure to engage in many deep conversations 
belly laughs and support from these amazing people. Overall, the center contributes to the betterment of humanity. And this is why I know the Denbo Foundation, the Dendo, Denbo donation, my, my bad, will greatly benefit future students. On behalf of UT students, thank you. so hard and it's just wonderful to have you at the center. Who, would you welcome with me now Chancellor Gandhi Khanna. Well again, thank you all for being here today. Don, thank you so much. Um, I'm, gonna t I'm going off script just a little bit. And this is always dangerous. People from my office are right now going, uh oh. <laughs> Two things, two impressions I got from John the very first time I, I met him. One was, he was, he is a lifelong learner. He just, he, 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 he says he jumps to his bookshelf and the floor there and he pulls out this notebook with like his notes falling out of it. And it was from maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20? More like 30. <laughs> 30 years ago, uh, uh, a seminar he'd taken on leadership here at the university. And he started to talk to me about the things he learned at that leadership seminar. A lot of people give voice to lifelong learning. You epitomize that. And so for you to be part of this, it, it, it makes perfect sense once you think about it. The part of the conversation that did not make sense to me was, all his stories about having played football with Philip Fulmer. And I remember coming out of there going, he played football with Philip Fulmer and he loves the humanities. We <laughs> <laughs> love you, Don, for, for that, so thank you. I, I am really, really excited about, this symbolizes the next chapter for our Humanity Center. And you, the university, as all of you know, has always been deeply committed to advancing humanities and fine arts. And I want to just say a few things about that, because at a time where other universities are really scaling back in that area, we have leaned in and moved forward. We've set up a new College of Music, and today we're here to name the Denbo Center of Humanities and the Arts. So we, this place is where we're going to champion top-tier faculty research. We just heard from our graduate student about his research and innovative public engagement programs. We've always had sold out performances at, at you know, all the different, the different theaters that we have on campus. Our digital humanities research is important. And Tennessee has long attracted artists, creatives and humanists who study and appreciate the arts. While others, as I said, are scaling back, we are doubling down on our investment. We're connecting, and some of this just got risen, the exploration of human experience with fields like medicine. That makes sense. Energy? How does that make sense? Any can tell you. Environmental sciences and data studies. Dr. Amy Elias recently joined scientists at ORNL and researchers in communications to teach history and ethics to future electrical engineers who are working on batteries and energy storage weaving the topics into their PhD course to encourage them to think critically about how the work we do will impact the world around them. This is just one example of how humanities and the arts are an increasingly valuable part, valuable in new ways, of our interdisciplinary programs and curriculum. The humanities, and I have an English major, so I proudly stand here and a history minor, the humanities teach history and culture, languages, philosophy, religious beliefs. They help our students to be well-rounded citizens who are prepared to enter a global workforce that may have languages, customs, and cultures different from their own, very likely will be different from their own. So thank you to our campus partners in the College of Arts and Sciences, our deans here today, the Office of the Provost, Provost Zomchik, thank you for being here. And the Office of Research, Innovation, and Economic Development. Brad Day, I see you here. Thank you very much. 
thank you, all of you, for investing in this space that will be a hub for humanities research on our campus. Amy, it's so beautiful, we all want to move over here. <laughs> <laughs> it is now my privilege to introduce one of the most delightful, entertaining, sweet men, man I've met since I've been here, and that is Dr. Don Dimbo, I just gave you a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> I, I claim it anyway. <laughs> your generosity is why we're all here today. So thank you, Don Dimbo, for your continued support of our university. Thank you very much. First of all, I don't actually think that I need this uh, microphone, my voice. Uh, if any, I'm going to set it down, and if anybody has trouble hearing me, I'll pick it back up again. So I am oh, picking up. It it's in the there. TV in TV. that case, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing that I have to say today, which is a bit extemporaneously and not intended, is uh, those of my great friends and family who are here with us today. Uh, I am as close to being speechless as I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and I know that'll shock you ever so much. Um, one of the first things that we started talking about when we were contemplating this gift was the, as Donnie says, the lifelong learning and uh, I thought as a sort of a joke, I might start the speech with the statement, Carthago Delinda Est, which is the first uh, sentence of the Aeneid, which means Carthage has, is destroyed. <laughs> and that was obviously one of the conversations that we had the first time that we began this thing. I'm going to try and stick to my speech, speech, but I also will probably do some extemporaneous things. Gosh, this is a big problem. I can't read it. Um, since I believe I have been engaged in the study of humanities for something like 70 years and have essentially defined those progressions in my own mind, I thought it might be useful to give a more formal definition. And since this is an academic uh, enterprise, I thought I would cite my sources as well. <laughs> Google says that humanities are those <laughs> branches of knowledge that concern themselves with human beings and their culture or with analytic or critical methods of inquiry derived from an appreciation of human values and the unique ability of the human spirit to express itself. My, Miami Dade College says humanities are those disciplines that study the expressions of human beings as a means of exploring and revealing what it means to be a human being. I had a classical education before I came to the University of Tennessee. George Sylvie, my uh, brother by a different mother and I, started at Ballarat Academy in August of 1963 and finished at the University of Tennessee. We both played football here once upon a time um, together after all these years. There are others of us that did that. Um, as I say, I had a classical education before I enrolled here. In the fall of 67, I was addicted to reading. I was taught how to write by very good people. Um, and my freshman inorganic chemistry course was a repeat of the one that I took as a senior at Battle Ground Academy. <laughs> uh, I can only read my right. Um, <laughs> I had four years of Latin, what amounts to calculus 300 level mathematics, spoke German, French, and read Hebrew and Aramaic. In short, I came to the University of Tennessee to play football. <laughs> <laughs> what I found, however, as a consequence of truly wonderful professors, some of whom I would like to mention here, have opened my eyes to the wonder of learning and to its value to all humanities and, and the classes that I took. I want to mention here Dr. Richard Marius, who taught a Western Civilization course three days a week uh, in the McClung Museum, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.50 a.m. And you better be there. Um, I'd like to 
acknowledge Dr. Howard Palio, my advisor, Dr. Larry Silverman, my mentor, um, Dr. Harry Hurwitz, who enlightened me to the wonders of the mind, and most particularly to Dr. Buck Ewing, who's the director of art history here at the University of Tennessee, uh, who opened my mind to art in a way that has enabled me to chase that will-o'-the-wisp for all of my life. These studies framed my life and are continuing to frame it and have endowed me with a deep commitment to see that other people have the same chance to learn and experience a component of being a human being in the same way that I have. I've often mentioned to people in speeches that I've given here upon occasion that two of the four components of STEM, science and mathematics, are contained within the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, they're all taught here in the arts and science. In essence, this is the core of the study of humanities. I started out to be a physician, became an economist, and ultimately insurance agents. Throughout my experiences, the one ineluctable component was the ability to see, to analyze, and to deduce. This process is only enabled through the absorption of the human element to see, to hear, to think, and most importantly, to create. The deep desire for the current and subsequent constituencies of U2K to learn and have the benefits of this same education which grounded me in the humanities is a reason that my family and I have made this financial commitment. The conviction that this enterprise, meaning now, I hate to say it, the Denbo Center, um, <laughs> I'm shocked, um, will, aid, will aid in that endeavor um, in the reward of a life committed to the basics of classical humanities education. Thank you all. I'm honored. Oh.